Good morning. And a very warm welcome, and also a very warm welcome to everyone joining us online at home. It's great to have you here in person and via the internet. Um, just a couple of notices to draw your attention to. Firstly, to say that in the months of July and August, we're going to go down to one service, so 10.30 service only. It will be broadcast and it will be recorded as well for those who can't join in person. Uh, I'm away for the first three Sundays of July and we'll have Alistair Jessamine standing in for me. Um, also to say that we have an organ recital coming up. In fact, we have a few, but the first is on the 20th of June at 3 p.m. It is free to come, but Matt would love you to give something to retire and collection on your way out uh, towards the organ fund. Um, I don't actually know what's going to be played on that day, but it'll be fantastic, I'm sure. But uh, if you want more information, please chat to Matt or chat to Sandra later on in the week during um, in the office. Also say we are still looking for volunteers for the open church in the summer. If you'd like to help out, then please get in touch with Sandra. And thank you to all the volunteers who have helped uh, sign up for weeding. And in fact, already some has begun, I saw. So thank you very much. The rest can all be found in the order of service, so please have a look at that. Uh, and hopefully next week we'll have the order of service also online via the website. But we're just dealing with a few teething problems with the new site. That's all I wanted to say. So let's begin with our call to worship. And if you could say the words in bold. Called to be branches in Christ's body. We yearn to be connected to the vine. Called to be mustard bushes offering shade to God's creatures. Called to be growing with God in the midst of this world's painful questions. We seek God's nurturing presence. And so the choir are going to sing a new hymn I've been told for us all here. Uh, it's a good hymn, I like it. It's quite a fun way to start off the morning and get us all awake. And it's called Singing We Gladly Worship the Lord Together. Singing We Gladly Worship the Lord.
I saw a few feet tapping away there. And it certainly sounded like Matt was having fun on the organ. So thank you, choir, for beginning my Sunday at least with a smile. Uh, and hopefully it's another one to add to our repertoire in the days to come when we are also allowed to sing. But we turn to God in prayer, and you're welcome, as always, to join in saying the Lord's Prayer with me at the end. Let us pray. God of small seeds and mighty plants, you take our meagre lives and with your love cause them to produce acts of loving kindness for you in this world. You hear our cries and find us when we are lost and wandering in fear. You bring us home with you so that we may be made whole, rejoicing in your goodness. Help us to joyfully serve you all our days, knowing that you are always watching over us. Prepare our hearts now to receive your word and our spirits to respond in eagerness to serve you in the world. God who delivers and redeems. We confess that we have at times forgotten to water your seeds in the world. That we have abandoned the hungry, forgotten the sick, and ignored the cries for help. Forgive us when we have not lived for others. We have not been willing to risk ourselves for the sake of others. Call us now into new life. A life that has lived in the promise of your love for the whole world. A life in which we hear the joyful truth that our sins are forgiven this day. Hear us now as we come to worship you, saying the words you taught us to say, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today we're looking at the parable of the mustard seed. And I was wondering what to do as an object lesson. And I found this lying in our house. Anyone who's got kids or grandchildren might know it. It's kind of like kinetic sand foam stuff. And from this, you can make the most wonderful things. And so you can rip bits off. And you can build structures. And you can do fantastic things. You can build houses and cars and wonderful things. But I didn't want to show you that because our kids have been running around in our garden recently. And for those who know, the manse garden is quite big, so there's lots of place to run around and hide. And the sun's been out. So what do children do when the sun is out and you have a garden? You get the water pistol out. <laughs> and I was shocked at how small this is, but actually how far it goes. And it's quite amazing. So from a very little thing, suddenly we can start to make everyone wet. And I thought the mustard seed is such a small seed, and we forget about it. It can be easily overlooked. And yet we're told it grows into this great tree, and branches come, and, and birds and animals can rest in it. And so I was just reminded, a tiny little water pistol, and actually the damage it can do and the fun it can do. And if you want to have a wee play of it after service, then I'm sure you can. But just remember not to look over those small insignificant things because actually they're the ones that surprise us the most and the people who surprise us the most. We're going to listen now to our readings and Mormon's going to read for us. The 
The first reading is Psalm 20, a prayer for victory, and taken from the Good News Bible. May the Lord answer you when you are in trouble. May the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you his help from his temple and give you aid from Mount Zion. May he accept all your offerings and be pleased with your sacrifices. May he give you what you desire and make all your plans succeed. Then we will shout for joy over your victory and celebrate your triumph by praising our God. May the Lord answer all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his chosen king. He answers him from his holy heaven and by his power gives him great victories. Some trust in their war chariots and others in their horses, but we trust in the power of the Lord our God. Such people will stumble and fall, but we will rise and stand firm. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Amen. The second reading is from the book of St. Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 to 34, also from the Good News Bible, and is the parable of the growing seed and the parable of the mustard seed. Jesus went on to say, The kingdom of God is like this. A man scatters seed in his field. He sleeps at night, is up and about during the day, and all the while the seeds are sprouting and growing. Yet he does not know how it happens. The soil itself makes the plants grow and bear fruit. First the tender stalk appears, then the ear, and finally the ear full of corn. When the corn is ripe, the man starts cutting it with his sickle because harvest time has come. What shall we say the kingdom of God is like, asked Jesus. What parable shall we use to explain it? It is like this. A man takes a mustard seed, the smallest seed in the world, and plants it in the ground. After a while, it grows up and becomes the biggest of all plants. It puts out such large branches that the birds come and make their nests in its shade. Jesus preached his message to his people using many other parables like these. He told them as much as they could understand. He would not speak to them without using parables, but when he was alone with his disciples, he would explain everything to them. Amen. We have our second hymn now, and again, it's a new hymn, but it's also a new hymn to me and to Matt uh, and to the choir, but it's one of the recommended hymns for today. And it's a love of God comes close where stands an open door to let the stranger in to mingle rich and poor. The love of God is here to stay. Let's listen now to the choir as they sing.
Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs. Let us pray. Oh God, be with us now in this time and in this place, wherever you find us. Open our eyes to your glory. Open our ears and our hearts to your living word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A couple of weeks ago now, I was hunched behind my desk at home, watching and taking part in the wonder that is the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. It was a difficult assembly as we heard firsthand the situation we find ourselves in as a national church. That cutbacks and drastic cutbacks are needed in order to move forward. That change, that change is going to be required as we step into the future. The decisions are going to be made that will cause some to mourn, others to worry, and still others to sigh in relief. As a national church, we're now in a situation where in the next five years, we will have just 660 ministry posts in Scotland, of which 480 will be full-time ministers of word and sacrament like myself. To put that into some perspective, in 2011, we had 1,040 ministry posts in Scotland. And going back further, of course, we had even more. In 2000, though, church membership was approximately 607,000. That's half of its peak of the 1950s, when the membership of the church was just through the roof. In 2019, there were 312,204 members registered on the books of the Church of Scotland. From 607 down to 312. Now, of course, you know, not everybody who comes to church is a member. But it gives us some perspective of what is happening in our church and indeed what is happening in our country at the moment. Now, some of the figures are down to how we as a society are today, the place that we are in, the freedom not to come to church. Thankfully, we no longer shun those who miss a Sunday service, nor do we lock people up on the gates of the church who have in our eyes sinned or force them to sit on a stool at the front of the church for everyone to stare at. Perhaps that's why we as good Presbyterians often don't like to be sitting at the front. Some of it, though, is down to the huge variety of choices available in society today. We're in competition with the five-a-side football, the football games on a Sunday. We're in competition with the wealth of activities available now on a Sunday morning. That's one of the great reasons why we can welcome people both here and also online to catch up later. We don't have to attend church in the same way. People are now able to join the church whether they live across the road or across the other side of the world. And last Sunday's service, to give you some perspective, was watched already over 200 times. Not everyone is coming to our building. So what is happening in our church? Not just here, but around Scotland. Is there really any hope for us when we hear those figures and those numbers that people are drastically, drastically running out of the church? This week I was reading a discussion online in which someone said they were tearing out their hair reading the gospel reading for today. Wondering where was the good news for the church? Wondering if there was any hope 
or if we were just like sleeping gardeners. It's so easy to understand the person's frustration and worry as we think of where we are. But I do wonder, what is the essence of the parable that we read? What's so interesting about the parable of the mustard seed is that the mustard seed is actually a weed. It's not a glorious plant at all. It's far from the noble oak tree or the beautiful silver birch. When other, spree, swing, when other weeds spring from the ground, the tiny mustard seed, the tiny, tiny mustard seed, inconspicuously comes to life, sending out a single root to probe the earth for nourishment. While the other weeds are gone in a single season, the slow, steady progress of the mustard seeds offshoots continue on for generations. Having begun as the smallest of all the seeds, the plant will go on to grow to nearly five, six, or even seven foot tall. As it grows, it blossoms with yellow flowers that go on to give birth to thousands of small seeds that simply float gently on the wind to find other spaces and other bits of earth. There they find water and nourishment and a home for them to take root, giving rise to even more stalks of mustard plant that soon crowd all the other vegetation, flowers of the garden. While we may try everything in our power to uproot the flowering plant from our precious bit of heaven here on earth, be it through relentless weeding or other attempts to sh- we find it has little effect. The mustard seed is there to stay. And it will take any force that we throw at it. And still it will survive. With that image in mind, perhaps we can find a different image hidden within the parable as we plow the earth of the text to find what is it that Jesus is saying to us? What is his message? When we think of the situation we face as a church and the work that lies ahead for us in the coming weeks, months, and years, we find ourselves at times, or at least I do, drained. Drained of energy. And yet our gospel reading reminds us that God's work does not stop, even in those times we don't see the flowers blossom that we may plant seeds which we don't see grow in our own lifetime. We heard how the kingdom of God is a thing that we cannot ignore, for it stings our eyes with its potency and refuses to be tampered down, no matter how hard we might try and dig it out of our lives. The gospel, we are told, makes a claim on our whole life, our whole being, and can't be contained to our spiritual selves on a Sunday morning. Our faith, like the mustard seed, which quickly takes over the garden or the field, refusing to be budged, is the same for our lives. But it also challenges our views on life. It challenges the world that we live in today and calls into question assumptions that may have guided our lives for generations. But before any change happens, before anything blossoms, first it grows silently. It grows secretly, hidden under the earth. The work of the past generations is not to be forgotten. It's not to be ignored, nor is it to be thrown into the bin as rubbish because we fear it did not work. But rather, we should embrace the seeds that have been planted, appreciating we might have to wait patiently, nurturing the ground beneath our feet today, waiting to see what still has to blossom, waiting to see those seeds that were planted generations ago. I was reading this week how the mighty oak tree will produce somewhere in the region of 10,000 acorns a year. 
10,000 acorns a year. We may think it as a waste because 10,000 oak trees do not grow every year from a single tree. Instead, they're dropped on the ground. And a tree can be lucky if just half a dozen will grow in its whole lifetime. But although all the seeds may not grow, they do provide a vital source of nourishment and food for the birds, mammals, and the ground beneath its roots. In turn, the animals will take the seeds away from where that tree is, allowing them to be planted elsewhere far away from where they once came. I think it's a helpful image for us as a church today. As we look for those seeds of yesteryears, as we expand our view from our own doorstep to further afield, giving thanks that people who have grown up in these pews may not be here today but have gone on in their faith to other churches and other places. Not every seed that we plant has to grow into a wonderful project or a fruitful church. Perhaps some of the seeds we plant ignite a spark in someone's mind to grow an idea that they can take with them and use elsewhere. We haven't got it all right in the past, nor will we be perfect as we move into the future. We shouldn't discount the fact that we have produced seeds of potential in the past. And we will continue to produce them as a congregation and as a church. But we are asked, once again, to practice patience, to practice trust, and to practice perseverance. To appreciate that when our seeds do poke up through the dirt and muck and dust of life, they may not be what we expected. Perhaps not even what we wanted, but they are there and ready to grow if we will just give them the nourishment and time they need. Because we're challenged to open our eyes and acknowledge that God is yearning to break into our lives and offer us a joy and a peace that the world can never offer. Like the mustard seed, the followers of Jesus and us today, we're really just a bunch of ragged folk. We're full of doubts, we're full of fears. At times we're unable to comprehend much of what Jesus says or what he did. But the reign of God is bursting into history, rests on the shoulders of people like us. The insignificant, the overlooked, the doubtful. And it's from this scruffy seed that the reign of God will be proclaimed. Transformed into something of greatness in which others can come and find their rest. Out of the most insignificant beginning, God creates a mighty wind that will blow through the entire world, picking up those insignificant and forgotten people. We just have to look at the early church, that seed of an early church, which began with a small group in Jerusalem and now is in every single corner of our globe. The parable reminds us that no seed is or should be seen as insignificant. So let us embrace Jesus as our gardener. Let us evict the fear in our lives and welcome the kingdom to grow in our lives today. Let's not try and uproot the flowering plant out of fear of where that seed may land. But let's rejoice that God is entering every single part of our world. That we, like the birds, can find rest and shelter within the shade of God's love. That when we get frustrated that things aren't going as quick as we may want them to do, that perhaps we just need to take a step back. And be patient as we leave God to finish his plans for our lives. 
as we allow the seeds to flower and in turn produce its own seeds to blow through our lives again. And as we worry about tomorrow, perhaps we should remember that the seeds of yesterday are still waiting to blossom today. And we can draw hope from the good news that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen. Let's take some time to reflect now with Matt.
Let's turn our hearts to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we come today in prayer, planting seeds in your gardens for our family and our friends. Those whom we love, care for and cherish. Lord God, you know their inner beauty and their jagged edges. You know their needs and their challenges. You know the hopes that you have for them. And so we ask that you nourish them as they grow into your love. Loving God, we come today planting seeds in your gardens for those whom we know less well, but make up the tapestry of our lives. We pray for our colleagues, our neighbors, our community, the parents, grandparents, and carers in the schoolyard, the strangers we pass on the streets. We pray that they may be blessed with your peace and watered with your kindness and your love. Loving God, we come today planting seeds of prayer in your garden for those in the public eye, for good or for ill. For the world leaders attending the G7 summit, for our politicians under constant pressure, for sportsmen and women grappling with huge expectations laid upon them every day. For our celebrities who are never out of the public eye. We ask that you may feed them with your wisdom and support. Loving God, we come today planting seeds of prayer for those further away. For the places and nations collapsing under the pressures of war, of famine, of bad governance, of COVID-19. Lord, we ask that you water them with hope for tomorrow and give them the strength to reach for the skies. Finally, God, we come planting seeds of prayer in your garden for us. In the silence, we come with our own needs, our own troubles and our own hopes and our own dreams. Hear our prayers, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We finish our worship today with the hymn, O Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend.
please stand if you're able for the blessing. Go now with the blessing of God who waters us with love and feeds us with hope for tomorrow. So may you and those whom you love and those whom you struggle to love know the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated.